What's up, America? Neil here with Jungle Farms Academy. Thanks for watching. Today we have an exciting video about the new MP 2.0 metal. So let's check it out. So what we have right here is again the MP 2.0 metal, and there's some significant upgrades with it from its predecessors, the polymer versions. Not to say that there's anything wrong with those. You've been shooting uh, MPs for a very long time, but there's definitely some cool upgrades. For some of you may know, I'm an armor for m and and this is uh, my training gun here. It's got a lot of miles on it. Uh, the, the finish is starting certainly to uh, show its wear from being in and out of holsters for, for many years, but it's been a fantastic gun. Finish has been great, and uh, big fan so far. Uh, also, my carry gun, by the way, which is probably most closely related, a cousin, if you will, of uh, is the MP Shield Plus, which there's a review coming on this one pretty soon. This is a performance center as well. So this is the closest uh, to the actual metal. This is the carry version, so it's a little bit shorter grip on it, but dimensionally speaking, other than the grip, it, it's completely identical, other than the fact that this is the 2.0 and it's a polymer frame. So what do we get with the new metal frame? And why do we like it? So going back between the two, the uh, polymer version and the new metal version, the slides are identical in, in dimensions to the point where you could actually take this slide off and put it on that gun because I have, so I know that it works. Uh, they both have, in this particular case, a 4.25 inch barrel. The frame, this is Cerakoted in a gray finish, which is really nice. I mean, one of the coolest part of the gun is the cool factor, right? It looks very sharp. It's, it's a good looking gun itself. It also is pre-cut for your red dot. I'm not a red dot, red dot guy, but if you are, there you go. This particular gun is not mine. It's been loaned to me, so I don't know what the original box looks like, but I'm sure it's a regular box. Uh, it comes with your standard fare of magazines, and I don't know if there's any plates in there, but uh, I can definitely check on that. So the frame itself and the slide are Cerakoted in a, in a nice gray finish. It's definitely an attractive looking gun. Uh, this frame is made of 7075 T6 aluminum. And of course the slide is still stainless steel. They come with very nice sights. They are metal. And uh, most importantly, in, in my arena, it comes with very nice combat sights. So I have a combat edge on there that I can rack this off if I need to manipulate with one hand. Very nice. The functions of the gun work exactly as you would expect the whole MMP line. In fact, it even uses the same back straps. You should have four in your box, so small, medium, large, and extra large, to swap those out, which is a really nice feature because when it comes to fitting the gun to your hand and having the right setup, the biggest measurement is from the front of the trigger face to the rear of the back strap here because that's where, my, where you have to be able to put your finger on there and be able to place it in a manner where you can press it straight to the rear, not to turn this into a training video. So once we remove our tool like we do in all models, the back strap will come off. We'll show you up close, but that'll say medium inside there. You have small, medium, large, and extra large, so you can fit that perfectly to the hand. And again, if you have MMPs previously, you can just use the ones you already have if you want. It has that awesome MMP grip texture both on the rear and on the front, which is really cool because even though the entire frame is metal, it's like the insert. Uh, for the actual uh, polymer frame or polymer grip rather so incredible texture where you really need it in the front and the back if we're doing a proper grip on there uh, that's where we want that traction to be so that is pretty awesome we're going to talk about the actual shooting impressions on the range so fear not we're going to get to that uh, magazine release is swappable like it's like it is so right now it's set up on the right hand side of the pistol but of course it can be switched over to the left hand side Pretty, uh, pretty straightforward, same process as with the original. So what is some of the bigger upgrades other than the fact that the frame is now metal? Well, the trigger is the biggest bar none uh, improvement to this gun ever. Uh, we have on my training firearm, I have the uh, Apex trigger, which is flat. And I'm not into necessarily lowering the stock weight so I don't change any springs out in that regard I just like the flat face I like the inner face on my finger uh, so that's why I changed those out but it uh, is definitely an upgrade from the original 2.0 in fact here's a uh, the original 2.0 where it has the hinge trigger and that's been a big controversy for MMP people some 
people uh, like myself, it doesn't really make one difference one way or the other, and some people really hate it. So then M&P came out with, on the Shield in particular, the Shield Plus here, the new flat trigger. And this was a game changer as far as triggers. I would never mess with this trigger. I wouldn't put an Apex in it. I think that this trigger is phenomenal for, for um, you know, self-defense and training. This trigger is phenomenal. So it's pretty straight with the uh, safety pedal in. The Apex version, obviously, this aftermarket from Apex, that's completely flat. But then we have the one on the 2.0, which is, is pretty much the same uh, as far as the curvature, the same as the shield. And that trigger has been incredible, okay? On this particular gun, if this was mine, I would absolutely not change that trigger out. I think that trigger is incredible. Now, a couple differences from the, uh, the shield plus trigger is that the trigger itself is polymer and it appears that so is the uh, safety lever or the, uh, the safety pedal that's on the trigger itself. On um, the uh, metal version, the trigger is polymer, but the paddle, that is actually metal, okay? Uh, and it has a very nice feel. It almost has like a rounded uh, uh, feel. It's something you just gotta put in your hand, but it's got a very nice feel on the finger. Both uh, the upgraded, the new Plus uh, Shield, and I'll show you it to you right here in the back here. That's got an over travel stop. You may not be able to see it. it doesn't really matter. But uh, on the on the metal, it's pretty pronounced because it's a different color. So you can see that down here. Uh, so that when the trigger is pressed to the rear, uh, it will stop it from from going further back than it needs to. I've also noticed, and I haven't seen anything in the in the material on from M and P, but I have noticed that we'll do this. I'll take the slide off it real quick. So you can see it side by side. I think it'd be the best way to take a look at this. And by the way, the takedowns as I'm doing this is, a, is the same as it's always been. There is a, a lever that will come down to the bottom here. You will, uh, you can either take the lever, which as an armor, we're supposed to tell you there's a yellow lever in here that you're gonna press down. And then once you do that, you can take the slide off without pressing the trigger. For those that don't push that lever down, you would press the trigger in a safe direction and then take the slide off. So nothing has changed with that from the original version. Okay, so if you look at the, and again, this is ambidextrous on this gun, the, the slide lock lever, okay? You'll notice that compared to the original, okay, they stick out quite a bit further. So the slide stop lever, or slide lock levers uh, are significantly more pronounced on the new metal version. They stick out significantly further. As you can see on the 2.0, one of the bigger difference other than the triggers and the, the internal frame um, is that they put this locking mechanism so that the, the slide lock would stay open unless you really forced it down. It prevented the gun from being, when the magazine was inserted firmly from the slide going home. Which, interestingly enough, on the metal version, that is no longer. As you can see, you can slam this shirt. I just did it. So when you insert a magazine very firmly, the slide will go home on its own uh, many times without actually pressing it, where this one locked it out and prevented that from actually occurring. So on the M&P 2.0, again, with that edit feature, you can slam that magazine as hard as you want. It's never going to send the slide home. Where, on the new model, when I slam this home, uh, and this is brand new, hasn't been fired yet because we have not done the range portion. Uh, as you can see, it will go home. And as you, this gun wears, that will happen easier and easier and easier. So I don't know if that was a complaint that was heard by Smith & Wesson, and they decided to uh, take that feature off, but they did specifically add it to the 2.0s, and uh, it is no longer on the 2.0 metal. So that's, uh, that's quite interesting. Now let us talk triggers. So again, this is uh, showing the version, the original 2.0 uh, version where you had the uh, jointed trigger, again, lever hate. And as far as the movement's concerned, uh, you'd have this wall right here. You'd find the wall's pretty predictable. You'd press through it. Not a whole lot of creep, but it's a pretty decent trigger. Then you'd have this as your reset, okay, and a break. And uh, again, I had no problems with that trigger whatsoever. Again, the only thing I like better is having a flat trigger. So that brings us to the Apex trigger. And the reason I want to show you this is because this is obviously an aftermarket product. This is something you have to add to the gun to get that flatter shoe and to get the trigger performance. So in this 
Uh, upgraded version, there's your wall right there. The gun would break very short. And then you'd have a fairly short reset and a break. Now, with the brand new M&P 2.0 metal, it has the much flatter trigger shoe. Okay, so again, there's our very predictable wall that we've always found there. Uh, very nice break, very little creep whatsoever. And then a little reset. I'd say the reset is a tad bit longer than the Apex, uh, but as far as the break and the feel of the trigger, again, I would not spend any money to replace this trigger. I think this trigger is fantastic. It's got a great break. That metal part portion there on the uh, trigger safety, it just feels really, really good. I don't know if it's just the fact that it's metal or the way it's shaped, but it feels uh, very, very round and it feels very like you have a lot of traction on your fingertips. So I do, in fact, like that quite a bit. If we take a look at the uh, the magwells, the magwells again dimensionally, as far as I can tell, are the same as the Palmer version. They do have, and I'll put a mag in here so you can kind of see this. They do have a ledge right here, okay, so that if you did get a stuck mag, you're able to get your fingers in there and be able to rip that out. Uh, very nice feature as well. This will run obviously any larger magazine, so. This runs all the magazines you have with all your other M&Ps, whether it's the 1.0 all the way up to this new 2.0 metal. So that's all uh, gravy there. All your extra mags work great. It has the same light rail uh, that you're going to find in the Palmer version, which is very nice. You're going to be able to fit uh, any of your accoutrement on there that you would like. The feel is very good. The one thing I do like uh, on the actual MP metal area here is on this rear beaver tail, the tang area here. That is actually polymer. And the reason I like that is that's the super slick area. And a lot of people, I think, misunderstand why that is the way it is. When you're going in to get this gun in the holster, if this traction, if this stippled grip, if you will, that comes from them, if that came up higher, that would, that would stop your hand. And you want your hand to get all the way up so you can get a master grip so that you can get as high up as possible uh, on the rear portion right underneath that beaver trail, that tang. So it adds a little slickness to it. And uh, from what I've done so far with working from the holster, uh, it fits in very, very nicely. Another uh, feature that's pretty incredible, it's something you have to feel, but they, the traction that they've added onto the mag release is pretty incredible. That's uh, pretty much skateboard tape on there. One other uh, feature I wanted to add is the serration. So M&Ps always had these like lower, or the 2.0s rather had this lower area of serrations which people complained about. I, I could care less personally, but uh, the new versions now have more scallop serrations on the top of the slide as well. So for those that, like myself that want to do a press check, there is no way your hand is, is slipping on there. It, it's got tremendous uh, traction there. Same thing for the rear, those little fish scale type uh, scallops back there uh, do great for being able to manipulate the gun. Uh, the gun feels just as comfortable and as home as all the other ones do. Uh, but we're going to go out here in just a minute, take it to the range, put it through its paces, and see how it performs from a shooting perspective. Here we are on the range. So we're going to get some footage of uh, shooting this guy live. Uh, so far, uh, pretty impressive. Uh, the one cool part about this gun, if you are already a uh, fan of the M&P and you have uh, M&Ps in your collection, and the, the main thing when you buy a new gun, as we all know, is one of the big costs are the, the new holsters and mag pouches and all that kind of stuff, especially if you have a light on it and it's custom made, etc. The great part about this is this will fit any 4.25 setup that you currently have. So if you're a fan of the M&P and you want to get to the, the, the metal version, uh, you don't have to change anything. So case in point, here is my, uh, my polymer version. We have the, uh, my favorite light, which is the TLR1. All right. So again, this is a, a tactical holster by Safari Land, so it'll accommodate anything. But if this was a, a Kydex, and the only reason I'm not using one of my Kydex holsters, because uh, as you know, there tends to be a little holster wear. Uh, obviously, I don't really care about that, but since this is not my firearm, I want to make sure it gets back to the owner in the same condition that I borrowed it on. But again, lights, everything attaches, and everything fits the way it should. So good news if you already have a bunch of gear for the gun itself. So a perfect example here, this is a, one of the very well-worn magazines that I have in, in my collection. Uh, so again, everything fits the same, no big deal there. We're shooting, if you care, PMC bronze, and it's 115 grain. 
So for what we're gonna do right now is we're seven yards away from the target, we're just gonna do some slow fire and just take a look at the accuracy. Not that I expect it to be any different than the regular polymer version, but at least we'll get some uh, first impressions. Gun locks open, let's see how we did. All right, we'll bring it up. So a good little group, looks like it shoots a little bit high. I threw one, my bad. Uh, but a nice little group at seven yards, gun shoots, amazing. The one thing I will tell you that I find kind of surprising with the gun, because it's pretty much exactly the two, five, sorry, the 4.25, uh, because it's metal, and although the original, or I should say the 2.0, has a very rigid uh, chassis in here that's infused into the uh, actual polymer, the rigidity of the frame, being that it is all aluminum, it, it does feel different. It does feel, um, when you're firing the gun, as if, uh, if there's less flex, if that makes any sense. Uh, I know that the polymer, we kind of get used to that feeling of the actual polymer itself kind of helping absorb that recoil, but you feel... I don't want to say you feel more recoil, it's just that uh, it, it, it just feels very rigid in your hand. It's hard to explain without shooting it first hand, but there is definitely, there is a sizable uh, improvement in the way the, uh, the way the gun actually feels. The other thing I found, and I think it has a lot to do with the fact that the, the frame obviously has no flex at all, is that it just shoots mags out of this gun. I mean, it's, it's pretty crazy. I mean, you could almost pop it out uh, almost going upwards. It, it, I think with the polymer gun sometimes you can grip a little much and I haven't really seen so much with the um, the M&P line but some of the Glocks and whatnot I feel like you can there's a little bit more friction. With this no matter how hard you squeeze the gun it's always going to be the same so it really throws the uh, the mags right out of the gun. So slow fire there's no doubt the gun is as accurate uh, definitely more accurate than I'm capable of and many other shooters. If you do your job, the gun's going to put rounds where you want it to go. So now we're going to run through some paces, a little bit more uh, tactics, some multiple targets, and some reloads, and just see how the gun performs from that perspective. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, Kim, so you're doing some dry fire. How's it feel so far? I love it. I you... don't know, I might want one. <laughs> nice? That's oh, great, I love it so far. What do you think? That's awesome. I love it. It's really great. Let's go take a look at your target. Very nice. There you go. All in the black. Looking good. All right, let her rip. All right, so we got our uh, bad guy here. Do a little tactical shooting here. What do you think? That was fun. <laughs> All right, some uh, CQB or some close quarters, if you will. Make sure we're good here. Let's work with the gun a little bit. I know this is a gun review, but I, the trainer inside me just won't let this go. So I always like, even though the gun's reliable, I always want to work on malfunction drills. So here's a little trick that uh, I always like to take a spent casing, okay? And my recommendation is anytime you go to the range, Put a couple spent casings in your mag, or at least one, so that you're going to induce a malfunction. You don't necessarily need a snap cap, and so that we can get used to uh, clearing that out. 
again there's a spent casing somewhere inside here so when that happens we're going to go into our uh, drill here make sure that we get that work done. So, here we go. so the gun works like it should No review would be complete without a little bit of uh, some distance here. So we're going to be at 50 yards and uh, we have a seven by seven steel square down there. So we'll take some shots with a little bit of distance. Mm -hmm. So 50 yards, here we go. Well, she's definitely on. I caught myself there, almost flinched on the second round, but uh, it's part of the process. Gives my thumbs up, my approval. I definitely like the gun. I have the five inch with just the stock trigger, so I really enjoyed the new trigger on that one. And I don't know, one might be in my future. Final thoughts on the gun from my perspective. Uh, feels comfortable just like every M&P. If you're an M&P fan, it's gonna feel very comfortable in the hand. I do find that that, that extra rigidity from the frame I don't know, when you're shooting it, it just seems more stable. It's kind of odd. Um, something you're gonna have to just experience for yourself or maybe it's just in my head. But I think it's a great gun. And again, if you're an MMP fan, you will not be disappointed with this one. So as always, you guys know where to find us here on YouTube, on Facebook, uh, Instagram. Uh, we are also on Rumble and we put all our A-list content on Patreon. Until next time, remember, it's always been judged by 12, then carried by six.